dream that Drusilla was alive. What happened? Very interesting what we were talking about last episode and how this episode is called Innocence. Again, this transitional period, isn't it, of perhaps losing a little bit of that. Well, I mean, we ended on them like that, so... Hello, a bit of conflict with Spiky Boy and uh, Judgy Boy, eh? My angel's too smart to face the judge again. <laughs> Still my angel. Oh. Oh. Is this happening at the same time? The angel. Angel. Right. Oh no. Very interesting. Oh. You okay? Oh, is he gonna become more vampire angel? Like evil angel? No. Oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Angel. The curse. Oh, I'm an idiot. Last episode, it was like the curse is still in place. The curse that was put on him has been lifted. Interesting. Okay. Especially interesting considering the milestone that we just had with him and Buffy. And I do wonder how this episode and this might affect that. <laughs> It's also interesting, by the way, how I was talking last episode about how Angel was almost this personification of the safety, protection, comfort of being a child and Buffy being in this transitional period of like losing that. And then actually she does lose that, L like literally lose that. Almost. And I don't know how long that's going to last, but all the same, very symbolic, I'd say. I don't know. You just look. Oh, did they have sex? If Buffy and Angel were harmed, then we don't stand to fare much better. Mm. Well, those of us who were born with feelings are going to do something about this. Xander. No, Xander's right. Good on him. Where's Angel? He didn't check in with you guys. Very interesting the questions about this curse on him, isn't it? Of like, was it always temporary? The guy coming in, uh, you know, to Jenny last episode. I can't remember exactly the words that were said, but Jenny was like, the, the curse is still in place. It implies that there was some worry that it wasn't. The judge, we, we must stop him. What can you tell us? He's blue, mate. Not the prettiest man in town. What is he? Just wish he'd contact me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm naming all the stars. That's the ceiling. <laughs> but I've named them all the same name. Rufus. Do you know what happens to Angel? Well, <clears throat> hello. Tough sledding, but one day he's working in the chorus when the big star twists her ankle. It's interesting to think, actually, because, I mean, this isn't going to last, right? He's going to get turned back. Uh, the toll. Actually, this is what... Hmm, the toll, I feel like it's going to take on him to have gone back here. And maybe he's going to have to go away for a bit after this to, to recuperate, to recover. And we do get that period of him maybe being away for a while. You know, it kind of itches a little. Burn him. He's trying. This one cannot be burned. Mm-hmm. There's no humanity in him. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> He's brilliant at this, you know, the bad, the bad angel. I'm back. He pulls it off really well. Good on him. What can I say? Hmm? Well, that was slick. This is great. Oh. Everything in my head is singing. <laughs> I like that they accepted him so quickly. Sorry, I shouldn't have prison. <laughs> and Woof. Sorry. Woof. Lap dog. <laughs> Hello. All right. Ah, ah! I kind of love this threesome. Ah, oh, I don't want him to go back. Can we just have this for a bit? What matters is now he's back. Oh, I like how happy. <laughs> this isn't. I don't know how I should feel about this. Not about this, but like how how I feel about it and how I should feel about that. Because I like this. <laughs> I like seeing Spike so happy. I like seeing Drew so happy. Angel is honestly. I mean, probably happier than I've ever seen him. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I think he, he obviously had happiness, but he was very tortured as he was. And uh, this isn't me saying he shouldn't go back because he, he should, right? Because the, the thing that he should be trying to do is go back and, and having to deal with that and grow grow past that and, and deal with the things that are torturing him and, and find a way past Do you know what I mean? But like, yeah, it's just I don't, it's just nice seeing them, them play together. And I think all the actors are relishing it too. It's always nice to see. Want to come? Yeah, destroy. What, where's your hat? What your what's your hand doing, Spike? We're going to destroy the world. Want to come? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's Spike's face and then his hand on her stomach. To destroy the world. Want oh, to come? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
I'm really more interested in the Slayer. Oh, interesting. I feel like because his reaction to Spike being like, you and the Slayer, and then he went, and he went right up to Spike, wasn't happy. I wonder if he feels like Buffy has kind of tricked him or got one over on him because of that, right? I feel like the vampire angel that we've got now sees that as weakness, as, as an embarrassment. And I feel like, yeah, he's got a bone to bone to pick with it. And I wonder, I talked about this affecting him and perhaps him needing some space afterwards. I think that's probably going to be true too. But whatever he's going to do now with Buffy... I... I mean, it's going to be painful, right? Because they just had a beautiful scene last episode of, you know, admitting they love each other and having that moment, you know, this beautiful moment and, and this moment where he's personified as her protection, comfort, safety. And I do wonder whether if they're going to fight or whatever's going to happen this episode, whether that's going to break that maybe more permanently. I just wonder whether they can come back from it, depending on what's going to happen. I guarantee by the time you go public, she won't be anything resembling a threat. She made me feel like a human being. Yeah. That's not the kind of thing you just forgive. Yeah. This is the thing as well. Let's not forget that when he was this, he did what he did to Drew, right? He did everything he could to torture her. And his line there about she's not going to resemble anything like a threat. I think he's going to try and break her emotionally. It's not going to be physical. I think he's going to be like emotionally torture her, manipulate her, break her heart. I just think the difference is that Buffy, knowing Buffy as I do, I think she's going to come back and be strong. And it's going to be another hurdle she's going to have to get over, right? But I think perhaps in the, like I say, in the process of that, she's going to have to get over him, which as much as, do you know what I mean? If he gets saved and he goes back to, as he does which i feel like i know he does her having her heart broken and having to get over that isn't just gonna go away because he got better do you know what i mean that's what i mean yeah yeah i can see them breaking up after this angel is not dead say hi for me <laughs> Xander. say hi for me right her going through a crisis not feeling good and he's been like say hi for me. <laughs> This book mentions the judge, but nothing useful. Wait, what does it say? No weapon forged can stop him. Again, no weapon forged. It's always very specific about that. I mean, I do feel like, is there a weapon we can have that isn't forged? What's going on? Sorry I snapped at you before. Well, I'm reeling from that. Nice. I was crazed. I wasn't thinking. I know. You were too busy rushing off to die for your beloved Buffy. Mm. You'd never die for me. Valid. No, I might die from you. Does that get me any... No, no. No. Come on. Can't we just kiss and make up? No. I don't want to make up. Uh-huh, you got to deal with this. But I'm okay with the other part. Oh. Oh, oh, good. I, I like that she stood up for herself and confronted the Buffy thing, the obsession that he has and not letting that go. We have seen that that is still present, even in this episode, last episode. Good for her. <laughs> oh. Willow. Ugh. <sighs> But I knew there was something I didn't know. Mm, oh bless her. Willow, we were just kissing. It doesn't mean that much. Buddy. Oh, don't say that Cordelia heard that. It just means that you'd rather be with someone you hate <sighs> than be with me. Oh man, we're really going there this episode, huh? Good though. I mean, look, all of these things that are unresolved, all of these things, the Willow thing, the torch she's holding for him, and, you know, the thing that she's kind of mm, starting to get past, right, with, with Ozzy's inclusion and all that stuff. She's never going to be able to truly move on from that until they confront it, right? Which is, this is the start of that. And so while painful, you know, not pleasant to, to have to talk about it, good that they've finally confronted it and they're talking and that it's out in the open, right? Because this gives Willow the best opportunity to move forward and, and, and move on from Xander and, and perhaps, you know, to Oz more fully. It also gives them possibly, probably the best chance to preserve any kind of friendship rather than letting it lie and never talking about it. And as much as it might also break them up as friends, the only chance to truly get back to an actual friendship that means something and is, and is, and is truly honest, this is the path. Having it here and talking about it. Yeah, so as much as Painful, bad, also good. Oh, he's gonna come. Okay. Oh my god. I'm so worried. <laughs> I like how he's playing that he is slightly uncomfortable. You just left. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna break her heart. Like, I really wanted to stick around after that. He's gonna play it like that's all he wanted. You got a lot to learn about men, kiddo. Wow. Although I guess you proved that last night. This is really sad. Let's not make an issue out of it, okay? I mean, look, as much as this is very specific, unfortunately, this does also happen. Sorry, uh, all, I, all I mean by, by saying that, pointing that out, is how much of an allegory this is for this kind of situation and growing up and, and dealing with this and, you know. I don't understand. This is really sad. I hate that the show's doing this. Was it me? It's kind of beautiful. Oh, no. Was I not good? Oh no, hey. You were great. <laughs> really? I thought you were a pro. 
<sighs> this is so beautifully horrible. Lighten up. It was a good time. It doesn't mean... God. This is what I mean. As much as later on she might be, you know, she's absolutely going to find out like, oh, he was just evil angel. The real effect this is going to have on her now. You don't just get over that heartbreak. You don't. Which is really cruel and really sad. Him getting back to normal, getting back to the angel we know, the hybrid, isn't going to fix that. It's not going to go away. This is still going to have happened. She's still going to have felt that. that <sighs> Come on, Buffy. Oh, her little face. Sound like I've never been there before. <laughs> Oh, God. Should've known you wouldn't be able to handle it. Oh, I hate this. I hate it. I love you. Oh, God. Love you too. No. I'll call you. That's horrible. This is gonna harden her. Make her colder. It's gonna be harder for her to trust again after this as well. That's so sad. Vengeance is a living thing. It commands. It kills. Oh, mate, I feel like you gotta let that go. This isn't healthy for this guy. Well, things happening here that we cannot control. Good. Angel could be of help to us. Good on her. Well, not anymore. It's too late for that. Oh, they broke it. Angel was meant to suffer. Wow. One moment of true happiness, and that soul is taken from him. <sighs> and Angelus is back. God damn. Buffy loves him. And now she will have to kill him. Unless he kills her first uncle. Guys. This is insanity. Thank you, yes. People are going to die. Good. Yes. Ugh. It is not justice we serve. You suck. It is vengeance. You suck. Is that yeah? Dickhead. Talk to Giles. Go to Giles, please. This guy. Way worse without his hat, can I just say. Hey. They need to decide how they feel, truly. I mean, it's not... Well, I know that Xander has said that he doesn't feel anything for her romantically. And obviously she's held a torch for him. But they need to talk about this and put this to rest. So that Willa can move on, so that Xander can move on with Cordelia. I would genuinely admire the show more for them both moving on their separate ways and dealing with it. And things are not okay between us. Fair enough. But what's happening right now is more important than that. Good on you, mate. Well done. Whoa, I, I think I'm having a thought. Wow, that's got to be a lot for you, mate. It's... Now I'm having a plan. It's wild that they... <laughs> I love I love that they were like, look, you gotta play this like this is so new to you. <laughs> Willow. Mm. Angel. Thank God you're okay. Okay, no, he's got the face on, guys. What's up with the lights? They are in so much danger right now. I got something to show you. Oh, God. Yeah, Xander, go get the others. Oh, God. And Willow. Come here. Oh God, this is the thing. If he ever ends up in Team Buffy again, it's gonna take so much, I think, if he's gonna mess with these, like all of them, for him to earn their trust back. What is it, Angel? It's amazing. Mm. Clock, clock. Yeah. Willow, get away from him. What? Yes, Jenny. Walk to me. What are you talking Buffy. about? Buffy. <laughs> I got a message for Buffy. Why don't you give it to me yourself? Good, okay. I'm glad that she's seeing this. It's not gonna hurt necessarily any less what he said. Well, a little bit though. Your boyfriend is dead. Mm, Xander coming forward. <laughs> well done, mate, well done. Things are about to get very interesting. Damn. Oh, God. Yeah, she's hurting right now, but she's got to get ahead in the game. As much as I, I always talk about her having to deal with emotions and give time to her human life, her teenager life. Have that balance, right? That balance. It's an frustrating and cruel and annoying how I find myself in the position of like, she needs to put that aside right now. And she needs the Slayer. She needs to be cold. She needs to do what needs to be done. Again, again, it's this thing, isn't it? Of this transitional period of 16 into 17, getting closer to an adult and, you know, Angel's representation of that, like I said, the comfort, the safety, losing that here, right? But also this idea of listening more so, like, like having to deal more so with what's happening around you and having to fit your emotions around that because you don't really have any other choice. It's a very adult thing to have to do. And I think as a kid, I mean, you know this isn't to say that some kids don't have to deal with that right it's cruel and they shouldn't have to but sometimes situations I mean they do before their time but i think typically children are protected from that and, and they should be before they have to deal with that more fully as an adult and and again it's this this representation like i say of me being like you need to put that aside you need to deal with that later right now you need to deal with, with what's happening you need to be cold calculated and do what you need to do to get yourself and your friends and the people around you through the situation and that's an adult thing for her to do 
issue and to deal with. And like I say, again, harkens back to this, again, this transitional period of passing more so outside of the realms of a kid and into being an adult. And that's kind of, I feel like, what is happening and, and this change, this representation of Angel and what that is ushering forth in Buffy and what that means she has to be and do. Buffy. And it's gonna change her. Damn, yeah, yeah. She's gonna have to let go of Angel, right? And it means that whenever he gets back to normal, it's not gonna be the same, it can't be the same because she's let go of that. She has to let go of it. Ah, it's so cruel and horrible. So twisted, so mean, so horrible to watch, but also brilliantly written. And the manipulation of all those things that are in play. What are we gonna do? Leaning towards blind panic, myself. <laughs> Don't talk like that, the kids. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, Giles, come on, mate. Angel crossing over the other side of us. I wasn't prepared for that. Okay, but we gotta deal with it. Are you okay? No. Is there anything I can do? Bless you, Willow. Considering what she's going through with Xander, the fact that she's putting that aside, right, let's not forget, Buffy's dealing with what she's dealing with right now, and, and that's huge. That's that's really, really big and really hard to deal with. But subtly, Willow is also dealing with something very serious, at least to her, right? Which which makes it on, on par, right? At least, like I said, at least to Willow. And she's putting that aside. She's coming to a friend and being like, are you okay? What can I do? Beautiful. Whoa. Like Willow doing a lot of growing up as well in this. Some event must have triggered his transformation. Yeah, good. Well, if anyone would know Buffy, it, it should be you. I don't. Don't put that on her. Okay. Buffy, I'm sorry, but we can't afford to... Be. Sure, shut up. Good. Good on you, Willow. I think I may need Cordelia for this one. Well, get us. He is a van. <laughs> good. <laughs> I mean, look, all across the board, all of them are being mature. I know there was a little bit of edge to what they were saying to each other there, and Willow's like, I've got ours and all that stuff, right? But Xander didn't rise to it. He let that pass. He kind of was like, you know, he just dealt with it. Lots of maturity going on from these kids, considering what's going on and the way that they're all of them being tested emotionally. All of them. Like, I mean, again, I talk about Buffy and I've talked about Willow. Xander as well, right? And and his relationship with Willow, Cordelia, also dealing with stuff and and her relationship with Xander. Jenny being tested as well, you know, that's relatively new. The only one really that, that isn't is Giles, but that makes sense because Giles is older. He's more established as himself. He, his identity is more kind of firm, right? He's gone through all that stuff more so than, than the rest of them. So it makes sense that he's kind of taking more of a back seat, right? When, when this is all happening. What I would like to see is him being more of, I guess, a, a carer for them. Not, not that I'm saying in an awful way he's not being that. I just, there's no opportunity for that either. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just wonder whether he'll come in and, and be that perhaps towards the end of this we'll see but all of them going through stuff all of them growing up wear something trashy er hey that is the least trashy thing i've ever seen her in you should have seen her face it was priceless this is so good because like again we're back here and you know everything happening is so deeply emotional and cutting and painful and, and painful to watch and so heartbreaking at the same time i see angel come back into this situation this environment with spike and drew and I, and like as the audience i'm like oh this is good i like seeing them all together i like them having this kinship maybe that's just a me thing i don't know but it's it's played really well and the actors are nailing it the writing's good it all makes sense and they're utilizing everything in play right now the idea of angel Angel becoming what he is and the curse dissipating, at least for now, and the consequences of that. I mean, that's such a juicy idea and they are playing it to its fullest. Like, absolutely. I mean, the thing that I was talking about of the things that happen as a result of that aren't just going to go away when Angel gets reversed back. And that's so beautiful, heartbreaking, tragic. And like, like I say, it's so fun to watch along the way. I mean, it's so easy for that to just get bogged down in the like, oh, this is depressing. And it is that too. But when you get back to these three, it's fun to watch. Do you know what I mean? And so that part of it, isn't guaranteed and they're pulling that off really well and i think you kind of almost need that right because otherwise it would be just too depressing too much like oh god you don't want to kill her you want to hurt her yeah you tried to kill her you're a wreck be rude force won't get it done mm. you gotta work from the inside uh. to kill this girl you have to love her. It's kind of poetically, horribly beautiful, which kind of sums up this arc, to be honest. I am very confident this is the end of their relationship. I don't think that they can. she can just go back. Whether he'll go back at the end of this episode. Oh God, the ring, oh God. <laughs> oh, but I just want to give her a hug, bless her. She didn't deserve that. 
beautiful. Sorry, I see the actor in her there. <laughs> Just the way that she pulled back the collar look, she could, she knew. Yay. <laughs> it's so annoying when you're in like a scene and you're nailing it or whatever it is. And there's like a, like a collar gets in front of your face. And it's like, no, people got to see it. It's going to ruin the shot. Funny. It's funny. Thank you for lightening the mood because I needed that. <laughs> Bless her. She dreaming again. Mm. Very tasteful. Do you know what? This is the thing. I'm in this clan of people that are like, there's too many sex scenes and things nowadays. But like, if you're gonna make like an art piece out of it, do that. Like, this is kind of nice because it's like, it, it elicits more thought and imagination in the audience, right? As opposed to just showing you it happening. It's like, okay, what am I gaining from this? Yeah, they had sex, fine. You could have just skipped that. And then at the end, it's like, oh, they had sex. You just save yourself time. Do you know what I mean? You have to know what to see. Interesting. Right, he's pointing out Jenny. This is, yeah, 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 good. Beautiful. She's doing her job, Slayer time. Yes! Can I get the principal? No. <laughs> you, you're, you're all dismissed. Beautiful. Don't change him. For God's sake, calm down. No, 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 no. Everybody. I didn't know. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta deal with it. I was sent here to watch you. Mm. So it was me. I did it. I think so. Really? I don't he... understand. No, no, no. He had to fall in love. The whole point was vengeance, making him suffer. So as soon as he experienced that and had the potential for having something happy, it would be taken away. That's be oh, that's horrible. If Angel achieved true happiness, even just yeah. a moment of... It wasn't sex, it was the happiness, yeah. We'd lose his soul. God damn. But how do you know you were responsible for... Okay, put it together, dude. Yeah, 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 you oh. got there. Right, now be a father, yeah? Be that figure. Curse him again. And those magics are long lost even to my people. Really? I can't help you. Then take me to someone who can. Mm. No, she will bring you. You need a punch to the face, mate. Not really. <laughs> Thanks for the offer. I mean, I kind of wish Buffy had got to speak to him first, but honestly, like, kill him. I'm cool with it. And who is she? Hi, I'm not a soldier. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The tour. Oh my god. You got 20 minutes, Nimrod. I just need five. <laughs> <laughs> he said it so quick. I was gonna chime in with like, he doesn't need that long, but he got there first, man. Fair play. You gonna wait? Remember Halloween, I got turned into a soldier? Uh-huh. Do you remember that? Well, I still remember. Oh, of course they do, right? Your ordinance, access codes, everything. I know that. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure I could put together an M16 in 57 seconds. Wow. But let's just find the thing and get out of here. Okay. Mm, you lingered very much on his face and lips, dude. So does looking at guns really make girls want to have sex? That's weird, isn't it? Do you want to make out with me? Hey, why not? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm sitting in class. Okay. I think about kissing you. Willow kissing you. <laughs> you know she asked if you want it. Come on, like, hey. Oh, I'm not going to kiss you. Okay. To the casual observer. You want to wait until it's special? You're trying to make your friend Xander jealous. Or even the score or something. He is so mature. I love him. That's on the empty side. Beautiful. In my fantasy when I'm kissing you. It's all about the two of you. You're kissing me. Yeah. Oh, he's so cool. I can wait. Beautiful. I, I love that, again, this balance that Oz is to Xander. Yeah. Yeah, you should be on him, not Xander. Come on, not not like that. I just mean like you know, attention wise. Oh, you didn't show me. Come on, man. If you're gonna do it, at least show me. He's doing this deliberately, Buffy. I'm trying to make it harder for you. He's only making it easier. Yeah, this is what I mean. I know what I have to do. What? This is what I mean. This is what. I... Sorry for pausing. Angel assumes this is going to break her. From what I know of Buffy, she's going to get through it and she's going to come at you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be beautiful. I am ready. Out of this entire, like, two-parter, the judge has had nothing to do. It's really interesting, actually, the focus that these episodes have taken on kind of more of the emotional than the grand schemes of, you know, the big bad. And do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of dealing more so with the characters at play. Buffy, her adolescence, growing up, transitioning into more so adulthood, yeah, than the basic elements of a supernatural show. Less that and more substantial, deeper, which is really nice and, and something that, I think makes you as the audience more invested. Way, way, way more invested than you would be ordinarily. 
Ah, and then we linger on him in the background alone. Coming back to my theory of him being left on his own, actually. Interesting. Also, a reminder of how isolating it can be when you become disabled and how your relationships with people that you know and love can change based on that. I'll be kind of interested to watch Spike and where he goes. And actually, if, if that does bear fruit in the sense that I think it will, how actually, I don't know whether it's on purpose or not, because like generally disabled folk, you know, folk in wheelchairs don't get like great representation in media how i mean at least to my mind right it's not like a positive representation but i i feel like it's an honest one because unfortunately as much as you know able-bodied folk do want to kind of imagine and think if someone in their life or themselves would become disabled that things would go on the same way that they were in the sense of the relationships they would they would have and quite frankly unfortunately it does change the relationships you have and you do find out the people that truly care about you. Sorry, this is really deep and, and serious, and it is, um, and it's heavy. And I don't really believe in turning yourself away from things that, difficult though they might be, should be talked about more and should have a light shone on them more. We live in an able-bodied world, and we don't do enough to accommodate for folk who are disabled and who use a wheelchair as well. And I think that image of Spike being left alone, on purpose or not, and I truly honestly don't know if it is on purpose but I think at least my interpretation of that scene is that it is so important to see people in wheelchairs and those that are disabled they are no less human than the rest of us and there's no reason and no cause that they should be left behind and, and like I say I think on purpose or not actually the show there does go to show you how unfair that is I think that image there of Spike on his own translates itself very well to the audience in the sense of like you kind of feel for him there and I think it's so important to talk about this and to raise awareness where we can that this kind of thing happens and as much as people might not be aware of it it does and we should all collectively do better and be working towards doing better and making things better is there something i can do get out valid do you want me to show you how to use it mm, a gun i wonder well. You got any less advanced if you can, I'll handle the smurf. Mm-hmm. All business, nice. This is uh, Oz's hair changed again. Oh goody. <laughs> Who dares? Come on, Buffy. You got it. Yeah. No weapon forged can stop me. <laughs> yes! Mate, he is so confident, isn't he? But he's just gonna tank that. What's that do? <laughs> okay, I really hope that takes him out. The fact that Drew and Angel ran away means makes me feel like it did. Mate, get wrecked. Do you think he's dead? I can't be sure. Okay. Pick up the pieces and keep them separate. Beautiful. Hey, it's a good point. They were talking about an army. They're reading about an army, an army, an army. It's like, yeah, no, bazooka, dude. Absolutely makes sense. Technology has come on. <laughs> yeah, buddy. This is the thing. You break the emotional bond. He's misjudged it so much because you break the emotional bond. There's nothing to stop her, especially if you hurt her. There's nothing to stop her from being cold, calculated slayer who will kick your butt. I feel that's what we're going to see. It doesn't work anymore. You're not Angel. Mm -hmm. You made me the man I am today. Kicking. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. I love how the, the rest of this guy gets disintegrated, but like... Arm! Yeah, his arms are like just impenetrable. <laughs> Honestly, like a fist fight and with like a shower, beautiful. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Ooh. Pulling that out, but you better be ready to use it. You can't do it. You can't kill me. That's a big step, yeah. Don't turn your back. Give me time. Yeah, maybe. Okay, we're leaving him. Interesting. So we're gonna have an angel. We're gonna have an angelus for a while. Very interesting. What a bold step for the show to take so early in its run. Season two, mid season two, you know? Like I wouldn't have put that outside of the realms of possibility, but I wouldn't have said it was so early. It's not over. I suppose you know that. Right, good, we're getting a moment with Giles. He's likely to strike out at the things that made him the most human. Mm. You must be so disappointed in me. No. No. No, no, I'm not. Good, thank you, Giles, mate. Well done. This is all my fault. 
No. I don't believe it is. No, 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 no. You had no knowledge. I'm to wag my finger at you and tell you that you acted rashly. You did. And I, and I can. Did she? When? He has proven more than once that he loved you. Yeah. You couldn't have known what would happen. Uh huh. Yeah. Brilliant. The coming months are, are going to be hard. Mmm. I, I suspect on all of us. Beautiful. That's exactly what I needed from Giles. All you will get from me is, is my support. I love you, mate. Well done. And my respect. Smashing. Good. Oh, Buffy. Hey, and what a way. What a way to usher Buffy into this adulthood by taking Angel away. I mean, I think I saw these two episodes as like very isolated, but I think it's much more realistic, much more powerful actually to yeah spread this Angel thing out for longer and have her deal with that. And I remember seeing the finale and thinking like, what, what was it that broke her and Angel up or made it something that was not so solid? This will do it. Yeah, this will do it. So what'd you do for your birthday? Got older. Mmm, big time. You look the same to me. Bless her. Well, go on, make a wish. I'll just let it burn. Mm. It's a sign of that lost innocence. No longer wishing, just accepting. You know, it's that childish whimsy, gone. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Poor innocence. So aptly titled because I think, yeah, the loss of, right? I mean, it goes without saying that I think a 17 year old person, still young, still, you know, got a lot of growing up to do, still, still things to go through. But I think the show capitalized on this idea of shifting from 16 to 17 and this idea of growing up. I don't think last episode I really realized how serious this was. I, I thought it was honestly gonna be resolved by this episode. I think I thought there was a, a strong chance that, that he would be turned back, but I think it's a good choice for him not to be. I've just got used to, I suppose, arcs ending in an episode or two episodes, right? And so that's why I expected that, but I think it's so much more powerful if Angel is like this now for a while. But what I don't know is how long they'll keep him like this for. I think it'll be a really bold move if he's like this for the rest of season two. And maybe the finale is maybe changing him back. That's a very long time. That's a good 12 episodes, something like that, right? Yeah, we'll see on that front. But I think this message of these last two episodes of Buffy transitioning more so into adulthood have been so powerful, so effective and been done in such an interesting way. And I think, ugh, so beautifully, beautifully, genuinely beautifully tragic and horrible in the way that it's presented that and built up her and Angel's relationship to a place where it's actually, it was actually honest and there was genuine love there from both of them. And Angel saying it first, which is a big deal too, because he's, you know, shut down. He's, you know, notoriously been shutting down and not being honest and open about his feelings. To have that and reach that height and then for it to do this is just so painful. And, and beautiful for that and I think engaging engaging for that and I think the representation like I say you know going back to last episode and how it kind of ended on that picture of them that picture of him with arms around her her like it's very vulnerable position this almost like picture of, of modesty just kept right but letting go of that and obviously what we know they did and, and the intimacy they got to and the letting go of that and everything that came after that and that image is so kind of marked in my brain as this picture of innocence, of being a young girl, and then everything that came after that of, of having to grow up, getting past that, losing the comfort, the safety, the protectiveness that the angel was for her, that he was personified. And so, oh God, I'm just talking now because I feel horrible about it. I'm really happy. I think the, these last two episodes have been really powerful and really, really good. And the depressing things and the tragedy about them has made them better. And I think I'm just talking about it almost. It's, it's, to make myself feel better I don't know but a really really good two episodes and it stays with you because it's not just got resolved it's this idea I think it like really markedly translates this idea because I mean I'm sure most people watching this video have been through heartbreak have been through growing up have been through this idea of something that was so safe and warm and lovely and something that made you happy and you never imagine it getting to a day where that's all gone and the feeling of that and and you know I think when you perhaps experience that there's an element of you that's like it's fine this won't last we, there's a way to get back together or whatever it might be and then actually there's a, a moment where it clicks for you that actually no it's not going to go back to the, the, the way that it was and what I had is is gone and that like pit in your stomach falling that emptiness the way your heart drops when you realize that is kind of the feeling I think that I got at the end of this of like oh it's not just going away it's staying and, and and i have to deal with that and buffy has to deal with that it's not just gonna get fixed it's not just gonna angel's not 
just going to become who he was straight away. We're going to have to deal with that and linger in that and, and, and deal with that as we as we go. And I think so. I think the episode beautifully kind of translates that feeling into the audience. I think it's very relatable for that. And like I say, that that very human thing, that thing that I think most people do go through at some point in their life of like, oh, this is horrible. I hate this. I don't want this to last. It's fine. Don't worry. No, no, no. You console yourself. And it's like, it's fine. It's going to get fixed. I can fix it. It's fine. And you you realize it's not. And you have to live with that. And you have to just get over it, deal with it, do something because you can't stay in this. You gotta, you gotta get past it and become <sighs> happy again somehow, right? And it's a really horrible feeling. And I think the episode ends on that. And I think the achievement of that is really effective. Yeah, like I say, aptly named. Innocence gone. Thank you for watching. Hey, if you're not subscribed, please do consider doing that down below. Thank you, as always, to those who do support me. I've got a Patreon YouTube membership. It's exactly the same on both sites. Early access down in the description below on tier two if you fancy it thank you to those who do support me you're, you're genuinely genuinely so cool i cannot like i know that I, i'm very hard on the sarcasm so maybe 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 that comes across sarcastic i mean it as genuine as i possibly can thank you hey if you want to keep the hype train going please consider watching these videos right here that's all from me more buffy coming soon but other than that hope you have a good day hope you have a good week i'll see you soon